Well, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am now at the archery or 3D archery in the city. The time now is 7 p.m. and we are making sure that the range is safe for nighttime shooting. So one of the ideas that we have is to convert this area that, uh, to be made accessible at night. So we have our headlamps and we are inspecting all the targets and the pathway to make sure that it is safe for all your archers out there. And we understand most of you are working in the weekdays in the morning all the way till the evening. So we are going to see whether is it safe to operate 3D hunting at night, especially for all your archers out there in Kuala Lumpur, who is working morning till evening and at night probably you can come by here to shoot a few arrows. And other things that has been done today, we have actually um, adjusted most of the targets to make sure that it is compliance, uh, in compliance with the International Archery Association rules for 3D archery, as well as trying to adhere to the um, World Archery uh, standards for 3D archery. So we are hoping to convert this 3D uh, park to be as close as possible to an international standard so that our archers can practice to reach that level in this place. So here we have Mr. Hafiz. He is actually making sure that all the targets have the appropriate scoring area, the vital areas. And we are using the handbook provided by IAA. And this is Daniel. He is ready with the lights. Yep. Mm. Just a Christmas tree. Can you try to switch it on? So, in, in this archery game, we will have uh, a minimum of three people per team and it will be guided by one marshal. So this is Daniel showcasing how he would prefer to dress up like as a marshal to bring archers at night here. Very flashy, one just fell, fell off. So again, this is not only for visibility, this is mainly for the safety of the archers and to make sure that we are visible in the, in the forest, it can get very, very dark. And the time now is uh, roughly 7.15 and inside the jungle canopy is very, very dark and we don't have much light here. So we are gonna see to make sure that it is safe to operate here at night. And if it's not safe, we will have to do the necessary adjustments We'll need to get a few people to help us to clear the path as well as making sure that it is safe and we're not damaging any of the ecosystem here in the forest. So ladies and gentlemen, behind me now is uh, about 7.20. It's uh, getting very, very dark. Obviously, you can't see much here, but um, Mr. Charlie have installed some spotlights and floodlights. So guys, please switch it on. So this is what you're able to see here at night. Uh, it is illuminated. Now this area is meant to be the practice area or the sharpshooter area where you can come here, practice to shoot some of the little dinosaurs. Well, we have dinosaurs because Mr. Charlie have already made this dinosaur. So um, we're not here promoting the extinction of dinosaurs. But uh, to put it into reference, recently they found giant dinosaur footprints in Kelantan, north of Malaysia. So probably this could be in conjunction with that. You can experience mini dinosaurs to shoot at, but we do not condone shooting at live animals. That's why we have all these targets here. Now, even recently, we have a, a few viral news where people are uh, people found lizards and monkeys with arrows stuck to their body. So here we are at Eureka Archery. We do not condone shooting at any living objects, not even trees. If you have the itch to actually shoot at living creatures, come by here, shoot at the 3D targets. We have it here for you. So please, use your head. So, this is what a 3D target looks like. Here's a wild boar. It is made from high density self healing foam. But, ladies and gentlemen, if you have the itch to shoot at animals, please do not do so. Shoot at 3D targets like this one. It's not a living thing, it looks exactly like one. So, please, 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 one more time, I'm saying do not shoot at living animals. We are here in Malaysia, hunting is illegal. So please, ladies and gentlemen, you have the itch, come here to shoot. Do not shoot at leaving things. Right, so we're gonna try the practice range at night using my Kaya 50 pounds with the Taurus 400 spine carbon arrows. So let's try it out. It is quite challenging, but I think it'll be fun. So let's try this. I think we'll shoot that little, little guy over there. Right, that's a hit shot. 
So let's try uh, this guy over here. And then finally, maybe the Raptor. Well, come here and try it out. It's challenging, it's not easy. And remember to bring extra arrows because if you're not good, you're gonna lose arrows. All right, so we are equipped to check out the range to see whether it is uh, safe to operate at night. I have my headlamp and I also have my little light here. And I'll probably use a gimbal to record the video. So ladies and gentlemen, let's see whether is it safe for all archers here. So ladies and gentlemen, let's take a trip through the forest at night. We have all our lighting. Let's check it out. So, Wait, nak gimana tu? This way. So we are going down the stairs. It's very very dark. So probably we'll need some reflectors, so that if you're carrying a light, you can actually see where you're going. It's really really dark. Extremely dark. So here we have Mr. Daniel in front of us, bushcraft and survival enthusiast. <laughs> so he will lead the path for us. It is extremely dark and let's hope for the best. So here we have the first target, the snake. I don't know whether you can see it there, it's right there. So this distance is approximately 10 meters, 10 to 12 meters. All right, let's proceed. So the second target is up there. There's a little turkey up there. This distance is 15 meters. So be careful when you walk here at night. Right, you can see there's a turkey up there with a backstop. All right, let's proceed. All right, we're here somewhere in checkpoint three and four. It is extremely dark, so we are going to be providing night archers with this light and the headlight. So let's see how well you can shoot at night towards 3D targets. Come, let's have a move on. So this is the next target that we have. We have the tree bats. So this is the pack down here. The pack is down here. So if it's white, it's for kids. Blue is for adults or competent archer. If it has two colors, that means all archers shoot at the same distance. So what we are shooting at is one, two, three bats. You can see it there. This is actually it looks very close, but it's quite challenging. And if you miss, your arrow may probably be deep in the forest. But we'll try to rectify that by putting a backstop there for you, for all you city archers. So Mr. Daniel with his trusty machete, custom made. He's trying to clear the path for us. There's some dangerous vines. If you're not careful, you may actually trip and fall. So as you can see, there's a lot of dried leaves here, so we'll probably get someone or a few people to actually service this forest, removing all the dried leaves and the dried twigs. Now we're not killing any living plants, we are removing dead plants and dried leaves. So this is a protected area, a protected jungle, so we will try our best to preserve the ecosystem and we want to highlight that we are just, we love nature. So we're doing the best for all of you at the same time making sure that this area is safe for everyone to enjoy 
night shooting. So here we have uh, one more, but we actually removed the target. The backstop is still there. Uh, we'll probably put either a wild boar or a duck or maybe even an eagle up there. So the, the shooting is elevated. It is very challenging. So we'll, we'll figure out what's the best target to put there. The range is approximately 12 meters with a, a slight slope. So these are the kind of things that we have to be careful. This, are, this is our uh, basically branches, dead branches. It's quite sharp. So we are recording this video so that we can review it later so that we can instruct the people who are actually equipped to remove all these items for us. Let's go. So this was where the wild ball was situated. Now this is a descending angle. So we will probably still leave the wild boy there once, once we have actually fixed the target. Target number three, traditional, uh, originally. Uh, but we're gonna fix all this up because some of, of it is actually decaying and rotting. And uh, we upcycled some plastics to make it visible. But this is one of the targets descending down. Let's go. So see Mr. Daniel there, he is clearing the path for us. He's doing a great job. Let's follow him. It's really, really dark. So for all you city archers who are not used to be in the forest, this is technically, I would say, the baby steps for you. Because in actuality, real, real forest, you won't actually have this solid ground. And, uh, well, you can see there's actually rope here. And, uh, there's probably, this is what's called a cliff wall and we'll probably have another target right there. We'll probably have a target down here. Descending target. If you can see it on the camera, that is one of our large targets, large backdrop. A King Kong or a gorilla. Sorry Harambe, we don't mean to hurt you, but this is just for the fantasy of the archers out there. Range is approximately 10 meters descending. And there is a backstop. And if you manage to shoot the gorilla, it's actually quite simple. My idea is probably to actually move it further back because in accordance to the IAA ruling, a large target like that, you'll probably need between 25, 35 to 50 meters. So this is only 10 meters. So we'll have to adjust that. So right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at target six and five. Down there, we can actually see there's a big anaconda. Well, that is again, it's just a backstop, but we can actually convert that into a large target for you. So it won't technically be a 3D target, it will be a tactical target. So hidden on this side is another tactical target. I think, I do not know what that is, but you can see there are trees, are uh, fallen trees that will serve as a natural barrier challenge for you archers out there. But do remember, we have to basically make this place safe. Right now, it's not exactly safe for archers. So we're gonna clear this up to make sure, to, to, to ensure that arrow retrieval is as safe as possible. Let's go. So we do have some forest shrubs. I do not know whether this is edible, but we have uh, spotted a few monkeys here. So this could probably be their food source, one of it. Daniel, do you know what fruit this is? Uh, no, I'm not sure. Can we take a, a close-up? Maybe some of the viewers here can identify this fruit. It's green, it's small, and I'm not sure whether it's poisonous, but uh, maybe if I was a monkey, it'd probably look, well, appetizing for me. So ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Daniel are just chopping up the dead branches He's not kept cutting any of the green ones. This is to ensure that the uh, ecosystem here, the flora and fauna, is protected. Ah! Okay. I thought 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this area is full of sharp plants, so I would not advise to be using this target areas. It is actually not safe at all. Oh, this is the right? Can. This is supposed to be something that is very badly damaged. Is it? Yep. I thought the... Take the panel. Oh. Mushrooms. Fungi. So ladies and gentlemen, you can get a complete forest experience in Kuala Lumpur. And uh... From a city boy myself, this is obviously interesting and exciting as well as kind of annoying with all the bugs around. So bring mosquito repellents, make sure you come well protected and please, please, please make sure you wear shoes. There's one more, this is target 8. As you can see, the target is not there because we were fixing it. But um, my personal opinion, I don't think this is a safe route for night shooting. There's uh, so many obstacles and if you are not prepared or if you're an archer who are not used to shooting at night and in the forest, I would highly recommend to not use this area at all. Uh, but we'll see, we'll, uh, we'll have a chat with uh, the other uh, teammates, the other partners. If they think that there can be, uh, something can be done to make sure this place is safe, uh, we will consider it. But at the moment, we are looking at at least 21 targets. Mm. Okay. There's another target there, number nine. Again, not exactly the safest place, uh, but we'll see how we can actually improve this. Let's go. Got so this was a place where boy scouts would train to climb the rope so we have actually sealed off the place because um, looking at the, the beam that has been installed it looks decaying I don't think it is safe anymore so we will try to remove this because um, although we don't use it for archery uh, some archers they are not exactly the most brilliant minded I don't want anyone who thinks that they can be a hero and start climbing that up at night and if they fall they can really really hurt themselves and they can actually damage the trees in the area so for all you archers out there if you do come here at night do not climb this warning you so we are here at towards the end of it the 12 and 16 so we are planning to convert this into uh, the longer range uh, targets classical targets preferably so let's take it out mr daniel please lead the path Okay, so in this side, we can probably do a 30 meter range for medium to large targets. I don't know what you can see there, but uh, we will remove the stumps so that we can have a 25 to 30 meter range here for classical targets. Of course, in the forest canopy. So my cameraman, Mr. Hafiz, is being attacked by a dragonfly by some bugs. So let's go, let's get out. Oh, yeah. Oi. I got hit. <laughs> I think there's a box. What? So ladies and gentlemen, we have completed the tour of the entire area and uh, I will be asking basically uh, my teammates what do they think about night shooting and what can be done to improve? So personally, I don't think it is exactly that safe. There's quite a lot of uh, dead branches and the uh, pathway is actually not exactly safe. Now for us, we don't mind because we have our proper safety shoes and we have Mr. Daniel to clear the path for us. But for actual archers, we have never actually shot in the forest. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. So Mr. Daniel, what do you think after pathfinding for us in the forest? 
Yeah, I think the, the whole place is okay, but it's not safe because there's a lot of thorn, like uh, Nipah tree. Uh, too many thorn tree here, so you need to clear all the pathway with the dry leaf, as you can see. Yeah. All right. Okay. So anything else? And uh, all this dry leaf must clear all the pathway. Um, not because of maybe our clear view, maybe your reptiles, you know. You know what I mean? Mm. Snakes. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's about it. So what must be done immediately? Clear all the dry leaf. Uh, some unwanted like um structure. Mm. Uh, rusty steel metal. Mm. There's um broken tables. Mm. Some of the few places. Yeah. Alright. So Mr. Hafiz, what do you think? Yeah, as Mr. Daniel said, that safety is a priority. So we have to clean up a lot of things inside this jungle. And as you can see, I'm, I'm well protected. Yeah. But even though I still got attacked by bugs and branches. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. We have to aware about your surroundings. Okay. So if you notice, all of us are wearing safety shoes so to speak like that so this is a typical uh, teenage girl Instagram shot all the shoes in one place so uh, here's how it looks like so if you want to come here we have to pay up the leaves make sure you wear adequate clothing protected clothing long pants is a must if not you'll be attacked by mosquitoes long sleeve is not mandatory but it's good to have and finally of course wear shoes people so that is all from me today. Uh, I am Anwar Matsar from Eureka Archery and together with me today accompanying me is Mr. Hafiz and Mr. Daniel. A lot of work to be done. We've been here since afternoon fixing the targets, fixing the uh, shooting points or the checkpoints and uh, we hope that one day you, all of you can come here and shoot with us and we will make this a memorable experience for all of you. Remember this is in Kuala Lumpur. It's not in the middle of nowhere. It's not in the backwoods. If you are feeling homesick well, or maybe city sick. Once you step out of the forest, you're already on the highway and the main ways. Burger King is five minutes away. Uh, there are three shopping malls less than five minutes away. So do not worry. Even if you are too fatigued in here, you can still have your burgers. You can still have your ice cream. You can also have air conditioning. So ladies and gentlemen, come on here and enjoy 3D archery. Come in the morning first. We're not ready to operate at night. So see you when we are open. Cheers. Like, subscribe, Eureka Archery.